Hey everyone, uh, Tim here, Silver Pascal Coder, and today, well, we Pascal Free Pascal. It comes with a jungle of different file types. You've got uh, things with a .pass extension. You've got uh, files with a .lpi, .lpr, and if you're coming from a different environment, uh, it can all be a little bit confusing. So in this video, we'll be going to decode some of this. Uh, mess so you know what to edit what you can ignore and you know how it all fits together so we're going to use the same project from the tour of the version 4 IDE so that was just the hello world sort of program with my name attached to it and um, but in the first uh, file here is the file with a dot LPR extension so this file here is the main project file um, of your project and if you've used Delphi it's just like the uh, dot the file with the dot DPR extension and is the entry point for your application so it usually contains a uh, typical you know program block or code block here um, which initializes your forms and so on, and then it will just have a, have a dot run at the end, which you know your program starts running. It also makes reference to something with a dot res extension here. So this will be another file that we will be looking at a little bit later, but this is a resource file here. And I guess the um, a question for you, the user, is have you ever, you know, had to go in and modify this file yourself? Um, sometimes, you know, I find that forms, you know, let's say may be auto-created, you know, and it will just keep chucking in these lines for, you know, dot create form 2, create form 3, etc. So, you know, rather than using the IDE to um, remove the you know um, files from an auto create list you know you can just go through here and delete them so do you ever modify this file directly yourself or do you just let you know the um, Lazarus IDE look after it all for you now the second file type that we're going to look at here is a um, is our source code or source files and these ones we're probably most familiar with is where you write your code um, but you do have two different source files here you've got one with a dot pass extension and you can also have one with a dot pp extension so these are the source files you know where you have your um, units your classes procedures and functions and so on now in Lazarus and you know Free Pascal, both of the extensions that's dot pass and dot pp are valid to use. Um, I will say the the reason why there are files with a dot pp extension is if you want to uh, specify that the code in this file is not Delphi compatible. Now typically, like that, I used you know dot pass, and if I think in the um, the last resource code you'll find you know dot pp file so do you use one the other both um, let me know in the comments below now the other file that you will see here in this um, unit then is a something with a dot lfm extension now the lfm this is your uh, form here which you know which we can look at here and basically information about the form you know such as the you know the positioning it contains information about the positioning of a um, components or the caption for a label and so on now you don't have to look at this file just visually you can also look at it as um, source so you can see here um, information about the form itself now if you have say a file with a whole bunch of components on it and you're having trouble say with aligning controls for whatever reason then you could look at the you know the source file of the form and modify it you know so that um, 
it does what you want it to do. So for example now, I could change the, let's say make the button, we're gonna make that 50, and we're gonna make it, let's say 50 high. So now when we go back into the, um, when we go back into viewing it as a form, if we can, can we do this here? Let's just go, how do we get back here? Toggle bookmark, debug, source, uh, save, and we'll go back to there, hit F12, and now you can see that the uh, button is now much larger and is slightly offset. So, why, you know, it's, sometimes, you know, it can be helpful to go into the uh, source file of a form and change it as necess change it as needed. The next file is um, we're going to probably have to jump. We're going to have a look at the uh, LPI file here. To look at this file, I'm just going to go into CUDA text here. It's a, by the way, CUDA text is also written in Free Pascal, so you may can download the source code, have a look at it, and you know see what you, you know see what you can learn from that one maybe. But this one here, it has um, information about the project itself. Um, it tells Lazarus, you know, what's in your um, project, or the, the build modes and, you know, other metadata. Um, it has an XML structure. It's not a file that you really would be touching, I would say, but um, it's important for Lazarus to be un to understand um, your project structure. Um, so you can maybe have a look at that, but typically, you know, you'd only be used modifying the contents of this file through the IDE. So we're going to close this one down. Now the uh, next type of file, now I don't have any in this particular project here, but um, these are what you would call include files. And typically what you might have here is some code, let's just go back into the source code. And you might have something like um, dollar sign I and um, my source file dot include. And you might have something like, I don't know, um, you might have some constants as in defined you know, elsewhere that you want to you know include each time but you don't want to have this part of the source unit for whatever reason you know they can contain common code uh conditional you know something that you can include um conditionally include certain contents or you want to break up a large unit into multiple pieces i have seen some um code where what you will see for you know in a unit then is let's say the interface section and what they will do then is to hide the entire contents of the implementation in a, let's say, a file with a .pp extension. Um, so that way, you know, you do have, a, I guess, in that sense, a total abstraction from, you know, this hiding the detail from the user. Um, have you ever seen these in your, the code that you use? Do you use them yourself much? Um, Again, let me know. But because I don't have any, we're going to include that because otherwise my code is not going to build very well. Now, the next type of file that we're going to look at here are uh, files with, uh, let me let me go to the next one here and see whether we, no, not there. Back here, this file here, let me put that drag. Now, this is a, another file with a dot you know, .xml type format, but um, it contains inform, you know, your project settings and, um, and where information is you know, within the, you know, the window layouts, etc. So that when you juggle between them or the application opens and closes, you know, it can restore the state to how it was last time. Uh, typically, I would have said that um, these files would not go into um, into your source control, but we come up to that in a bit later on. 
Now here also, because of what I've done, you'll also see now some files with a .o extension. And you can have files, do we have one um, here with a .ppu extension. Now these are compiled uh, units and the .o are compiled object files. Now these are generated when you build the project. So they're sort of temporary, um, they are temporary on the way to creating the actual binary you know, image that, you, that a, pro, a user would run. Um, and these, by the way, can be you know, safely deleted if you need to. Although Lazarus does have a nice little function under the run menu where you can do a clean up and build and what it will do is show you all of the um, files that can be deleted here. I um, don't know why I've got all these other ones here but interesting to see. So we're just going to say yes to that one, clean up, and now we'll do like a full build here. Again, I'm not quite sure why it's, you know, this, what I've added in here to make it go that large, but there you go. Now, because I'm in Linux, um, I don't really have some of these other files here, but we do have the .res one. We do not have an RC file or a manifest file. Um, but these are resources, well the .rc files are resource scripts, the .res file is, uh, um, we get that one, that is a compiled resource. The manifest file, that's the one with a .manifest extension, contains information about UACs and um, themes. And now the .res file, it does get a mention in the project source though, and it contains um, version information and icon information. It also, you know, can also will also include information if you do decide, you know, if you do come to a, you know, localization of your application and um, using other resources like images and so on. Um, now, then there is this other file here, which is um, a file which has a dot .compiled extension. And that particular file, it's um, used to keep track of the build state of your project. And, you know, it's safe to delete, you know, it goes into this um, lib, you know, folder, or under this lib folder. Um, but it's useful for Lazarus to decide whether or not it needs to rebuild a project or not. So um, sometimes if you have problems with building a project, you know, you can just wipe the contents of this directory and go from there. That's about um, it for this particular video. Um, and you now have some idea of what each file is. Um, I will make a, a cheat sheet that you can download and use. And um, hopefully the um, it now will feel a lot less mysterious as to what each file type is and what you do, what's in it or what you can do with it. But thanks for watching and if you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and for more modern Pascal content. And until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then. Bye. Now, typically the um, location for the um, object files is, I mean, I'm just going to go back into here. I think I can go into here and... Yeah, so the typical location for uh, your lot, you know, for your object files, etc., is uh, we'll just go to a new unit here. It will be that folder there. Now I think in here though, what I've done is um, eleven fifty nine. That's about right. Mm. Yeah, 1158, they've all been rebuilt into this folder here. Now, what we will do then is um, 
go into our project options here go down into the paths for the compiler here set the output folder and hit the OK button go back into the run menu clean up our build um, we'll just do a clean up here again and now if we go back into here you will see now all those other object files have been removed we do get the um, prog the ultimate pro you know, program that we would run will wind up in here, um, but the object files will, you know, everything else that is temporary goes into here. So these are sort of the files that you would not put into your version control software.